What's going on everybody? So it is now 2023. And so a video that I've wanted to get out for a while now is one that encompasses the questions that I get asked and ask to new users on what machine they want to get. So we're gonna do that now. So some of the things that I ask right off the bat when I'm talking to somebody about lasers and their need or want for one is first, what's your budget? Second, what are you going to make? And third, how much space do you have? So those are the three things that we're going to cover and go over right now. So starting off, you know, we're here looking at the uh, OM Tech page. So we're going to talk about how much money you got. So when we go to the products, we sit here and we look at, you know, there's the CO2, the fiber, pre-owned. You know, for right now, when we talk about how much money you got, most people are looking to get into the laser game and they're talking about a CO2 machine. So your cheapest option to just tinker around and mess with things is gonna be your desktop. So this desktop version, which is also known in the industry as the K40, is, to me, a little bit underwhelming, but it gets people started. So these, these 40 watt machines, let me get them pulled up here. So the 40 watt machine, both the, the blue and the red one, very similar, um, but they're small. And I mean, you're, you're talking, there's only an eight by 12 cutting area in this thing or engraving area. Um, so really like, yeah, it'll get you going. It'll get you some experience. Most people that I'm talking to that are actually getting these units are right away going and they're upgrading the boards to something that's compatible with Lightburn. Because right out of the gate, um, this this controller is, is limiting. It, it doesn't have all the cool features. It doesn't have like, it's just not, it doesn't work with Lightburn. Lightburn is just amazing and that's what everybody wants to use. So the, the 40 watt, obviously the most budget friendly option. I mean, right now it's on sale, but we're talking normally uh, 529 right now it's 479. So to get in the game and to start op awesome, like go for it. This is, this is a machine that will get you started and you'll start to understand the principles behind the CO2 laser with mirror alignment and all of that jazz, but that'll get you started. So past that, then we're talking about our mid range machines. So you're, you just want to get into the game. You want to get started cheap options. You've got your 50 watt machines. So this, uh, MF 1220. So that's a 12 by 20 cut bed, uh, with a, uh, rotary actually in this machine. So it, it's a flat rotary. It's not anything special or to write home about, but it gets you started. It gets you a rotary, it gets you a machine and you're coming in just over $2,000. Um, again, another 50 watt version, it has more Z clearance, doesn't come with a rotary, but has a little bit more space. So that way you can fit rotaries in it. Um, same cut area. And then you've got the 55 watt gives you a little bit bigger cutting area, 16 by 24, and it gives you a little bit extra uh, power because it's a, it says 55 watt. Uh, in my experience, they all come with a 60 watt tube in them. So <clears throat> it is is definitely like that's some bang for your buck to get into the game. Um, but, but if you're looking for ease of use, if you're looking for plug and play, if you're looking for a Glowforge contender, um, you're, you're looking for the puller. So here's the Polar. Uh, I mean, it is the Glowforge contender and look, they even have a nice little homepage that makes it look all pretty and, and beautiful. Um, the Polar, it is a 12 by 20 bed as well. Let's just double check that and make sure. Right there. So 12 by 20, pretty dang close. Um, so the Polar is also a 12 by 20 bed and it is very plug and play. The mirrors are already aligned. It's supposed to be ready for you to use right out the gate. And from my experience and working with my colleagues, it has got an actual, a pretty good punch to it. You know, a 50 watt machine, you know, your, your glow forges are coming in at a 40 watt or 45 watt, but I've actually seen some pretty impressive projects come off of the Polar um, with that 50 watt tube. 
So it, honestly, user-friendly, it doesn't have a whole lot of buttons. It, it's pretty straightforward. It has pretty much a start button. That's what you got. Um, and then it is also compatible with Lightburn, which is a huge improvement for those people that have had an experience with a Glowforge because they are just chained to the web software that Glowforge provides. Um, this machine comes in a very similar price as the 60 watt version, uh, or sorry, the, the 60 watt cabinet version. So if you need plug and play, this is your guy. If you are, hey, I wanna get into the biggest machine I can and I'm, I'm willing to, to, to learn and get my hands dirty, you wanna go over to the 60 watt machine. All right, because here with the 60 watt machine, you've got a 20 by 28 bed. For people that are coming from a Glowforge, like that is a, an open pasture of, of laser cutting enjoyment. Um, the 60 watt machine this is the machine that I started out with when I was first getting into the game and I love it. It's, I still use it to this day and it is the machine that I use for all of my tumblers and it is still just running away. It is a freaking workhorse. So awesome machine, but then in the same bed size, you've got your 80 watt, you've got a hundred watt. So there's a lot of options there, but that, that kind of concludes like where I look at, Hey, this is budget and I'm just trying to get into the game. So we're going to stop there with trying to stick to the budget. Um, next let's talk a little bit about what it is that you want to make, because that also drives what it is that you need. Um, if you are looking to mainly work with organic materials, you know, such as, uh, wood, or if you're looking to work with acrylic, you know, other, other products like that, then a CO2 machine is what you need. Um, if you are looking to mark metal, if you're looking to do other things outside of what a CO2 machine can do, you're looking at the fiber machines. So the fiber lasers, the Galvo lasers, these ones right here. So these are the lasers that work with metal. If you're looking to, hey, I wanna cut some metal and I wanna do some serious damage, you need to look into the fiber cutting machines. And in this, in this bracket, reach out to me. You know, shoot me a message on, on, in, or on uh, YouTube, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, because these ones are kind of a special deal and there, there's a whole spiel and, and sales force that goes into these. So I can get you connected to the right people, but that's where the, the fiber cutters are. So we're talking about being actually cut steel cut, like, and this is like what you're doing in a production environment. Um, your fiber machines or fiber lasers, these can cut. It's going to take a dang long time compared to what the other ones can do, but the fiber lasers, the Galvo fibers, these ones right here, they are meant to mark. Um, I have the 30 watt uh, fiber and that one I use all the time. I have done wallets, I have done leatherette, I have done pff, other metals, I've done spatulas, uh, you, you name it in the metal stuff, like this is what it's for. Um, it can also work on some plastics, like you deal with, you mess with the settings and get them right. It can do a lot of things. Um, but it doesn't do great on wood. So that's where like kind of the division is between what a fiber does and what your CO2s can do. All right. So now that we're not talking about budgets and we're saying, Hey, what is the most I can get at OM tech? You, I, I've got the whole lineup sitting here now. So we're talking down from the desktop versions up to the biggest and the baddest the 150. So this one is an autofocus, a 40 by 63 bed with 150 watt tube in it. Like this is the dream that I wish was sitting in my garage right now. Um, currently I run the 100 watt. So it's the AF 2440 100. And that one is a workhorse. Like I, I use it day in and day out, cutting my wholesale stuff and I love it. But I do wish that when I bought my machine, that at least the 130 was around because I would have been all over it. Like you just, I would have been nuts because the, the thing that I look at is, hey, what is a full width of plywood? Most of my sheets are coming in at a four by eight, so 48 inches wide. It would have been nice that I could have just fit a full width of ply in there and just send that sucker through the pass through until the pasture or until the cows come home. Um, 
but then you look at the 150. Like if you are getting five by five sheets of sheet goods, like you're golden. That can handle any of the dimensional lumber, the dimensional uh, sheet goods that you can throw at it. It has tons of power. And honestly, if you get that machine, I don't know that you need really anything bigger unless you are in a, a complete industrial environment and doing something way outside of what I even have experience with. But those are the big boys. Um, so now let's talk, let's jump back and let's talk about how much room do you have? So for these big guys, they need big doors. Uh, if you take the wheels off, if you take the feet off, if you take the buttons off, you take everything off of the outside of that machine, you flip it onto its back and you, you look at it, it will get to about 34 and a quarter inches tall. And then you flip it up so it could fit through say a 35 inch doorway. And if you're really aggressive, you could take that door out and you could get it in there. But these are big machines and they are heavy. So this is where, you know, hey, does one of these machines fit you better? Like, where is it going to live? If, if it's not going to live in a garage or a shop and you actually want to take it into your house, these are the machines that I often steer people towards because of the ease of getting this inside. Uh, you know, obviously you look at this, uh, MF 80, this one is really stout, you know, or really short and you can flip it onto its back, take it right in. No problem. These other ones that have a base, it is removable. You can remove this base, take it off, move it out of the way, take the, the bait or the, the total machine, flip it up on its back, take it in and then bring the base in, put it together and you're golden. So these machines are are perfect for that scenario where I need to get it through a narrow doorway. Um, but these big boys, like a nice roll up garage door is going to be much better for these guys. Cause I mean, we're talking the, these bigger machines, they're like the size of a Honda civic. So you need some space for them. You need a, a little bit of elbow room for them to live. So one thing to point out, and it gets brought up often, is these dual laser head machines. So you've got this ZF3551, so that it's a 130, and then you've got the, the 100 watt down here. So these dual head machines, they are not the same as having a full big bed machine. Um, you look at these, and the way that I think about them is they are meant for production of smaller items. So these ones, essentially they, they take the, the work bed that you have and it splits it in half and it's going to duplicate the work that is being done on the left side to the right side. So that way you can really, you know, nail down your production. You can make a ton of stuff really fast because you're running two heads, but they're stuck on the same gantry system. So as they move, they are moving together and you can't really take them apart. Like from what I understand, I've never used one, but you can actually slide one of the laser heads, you know, closer to the other to get a little bit more room, a little bit more use out of it. But there's still that limitation that it doesn't give you the full use of the bed. Something worth mentioning, you know, when we talk about, you know, the size of the cut area, all those things, all of the mid range to high power machines. So excluding the desktops. So like these two, um, they all have pass throughs. So you see these doors that sit on the front of the machine. So those open up so you can send material through the front out the back. So it gives you the opportunity to use the pass through for larger engravings, for larger cuts, you know, whatever it may be. Um, it's got that option. So you can see these doors on almost all of these machines <clears throat> right there, right there. So, I mean, on all these machines, you've have that, you know, I mean, we'll call it infinite where you can just send it through the front and, you know, keep cutting, you know, use sections and pass it all the way out the back. Um, infinite. I can't imagine you having an infinitely long piece of wood and making that work, but 
you can put essentially like on the the 150 and 130 you can put a whole sheet of plywood straight through the thing as long as it's supported on the in and the out so really cool um i use my pass through on my 100 watt often because i don't want to break down the sheets more than i have to so i flip that front down i put it in there and i cut one end and i keep moving it through and keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting so awesome thing to have on is those pass throughs the polar does have a pass through but it is pretty thin so it it limits the thickness of the materials that you can use through it but it does have one well guys that about wraps it up uh we've gone through you know all the questions that i normally ask people or that i get asked um, talking about what people's budgets are the products that they're wanting to make and the space that they have for their machines so if you are considering a laser and OM Tech is the one that you have your eye on, please go down into the description and look for the current discount codes that we have available. Also, I will list down there our super helpful group that I am one of the admins for that you can go to to help share your projects, to talk to other users, and even find help. So it's an awesome place to be and an awesome community to be a part of. So. If you liked this video and it was helpful, please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.